past decade called You Are What You Eat. Once again, a catchy slogan, but not true. You are what you believe about what you eat. Not so catchy, but a lot more accurate. But getting back to Dr. Bruce Lipton, in the next video, he uses the analogy of a camera taking snapshots of the physical world our brain has projected out there. But, he says, our beliefs act like filters on that camera, filtering out certain frequencies and changing the picture that comes in. The video you are about to watch is very poor quality, and the sound actually goes out of sync in places. It was one of the early workshops Dr. Lipton gave and not professionally produced. But still, the information is so important that I ask you to put up with that and listen carefully anyway. Here's the point. We adjust our genes to fit the environment that we think we live in. And I say we think we live in because perception may be right and perception may be wrong. And therefore, perception is belief. And if this is true, do you understand what this means? It's belief that changes your genes. It's your perception that changes your genes. It's not an accident. And so this chart out of science, which is about Cairns' work about genetic changing, uh, I, cha I, I marked this one with an asterisk because when this article came out, this box was called Genes of DNA Metabolism. There's now a new name for that. It's now, they're called genetic engineering genes. What this means is this. We have now found out that in every one of your cells, you have genes whose function it is to rewrite the other genes when necessary. So you are all equipped with an ability to adapt and change your genes as you respond to the environment. So all of a sudden it says this. The environment, watch where the arrow goes, the environmental signals activate genetic engineering genes. They can change your own genes and change your genotype. But this one, organisms' perception of the environment separate from the environment. Why? Because perception and environment may be two different things. I might say, I live in a toxic, hostile environment. But that might be my belief. I might be in a very supportive environment. So it says, my perception may differ from the reality of the environment. But n nonetheless, what does perception do? Follow the blue arrow. Activates genetic engineering genes. Your own beliefs are selecting your genes. And if you don't have the right genes to handle the stress that you're in, your belief will rewrite your genes in an effort to do so. So all of a sudden it says, there's a lot of control over your life, but it's mediated by the perception of the environment. That's what's controlling the whole thing. So our third conclusion is, not only does the perception activate behavior, not only does the perception activate the genes, but when necessary, perception rewrites genes. So what's the conclusion? Are you genetically controlled? Are you at the behest of your uh, heredity? Are you a victim? Absolutely not. Why? Because by adjusting your perception, you can adjust your behavior. By adjusting your perception, you can select different genes in your function. By adjusting your perception, you can rewrite your genes. Now, I wouldn't want you to rewrite your genes because 95% of us got here with very appropriate genes to survive and have a great life. Here's the problem. Almost always, when you rewrite your genes, you do a negative process because your genes were already working. And so lots of illnesses and things like cancer, 95% of cancer has no hereditary linkage. 95% of cancer is actively produced by an individual's perception rewriting their normal genes and making cancer genes. All of a sudden, it's, unfortunately, remember when I told you when you were a victim of your heredity, you could be irresponsible because the genes just came that way. If you understand what I'm talking about, then all of a sudden you say, oh my goodness, then how I see things, how I believe things are going on become important. The answer is, huh, well, if you think your behavior or the selection of your genes or the rewriting of your genes is important, then the answer is yes, because all of these are connected to belief, because perception in humans is related to belief. So you have the ability to change anything in your body. Unfortunately, if you got here healthy and you change it, 
that usually means you're making it less uh, uh, effective as a living organism. So the bottom line is this, the perception of the environment, your nervous system sees the environment and interprets it. So here's the real environment, here are the cells. Interestingly enough, if I would take dystrophic patients and take muscle cells out of their body, in many cases when I took the cells out of the body and put it into a good environment, the cells grew beautifully and, and grew healthy and well. But when they were in the body, they didn't. Why? Because somewhere between the environment and the cell, the perception got involved with it. So our beliefs are altering our biology at every moment, at every time. So in conclusion, let me wrap it up and show you this. Here's the point. The body is like a camera for the following reason. Whatever the environmental signal is, it's picked up by the lens, the, so the camera sees something, the lens picks it up and translates it into the film where you make a complementary copy so that the camera always makes a complement of what is found in the environment. Well, the truth is, in biology, it's the same thing. The cell is like a camera. Whatever is in the environment, the membrane is like a lens. It picks up the image and sends that image to the nucleus where the database is. And that's where the stored images are. And the interesting aspect about it is this. The cell will make a physical structure to complement the environment. So that's, if you're a diagnostician and you're looking at somebody's health, their physical expression is a reflection of the environment that they're in because they're making that mimic. So the bottom line is this, when you open your eyes, is this the image you see? The reason why? If you open your eyes and live in this stressful situation, what are you gonna do to your physiology? Adrenaline, fight or flight, shut down growth, shut down the immune system, and be less intelligent. But you could easily look at the world and see a much better, healthier picture. For example, Maxfield Parrish's ecstasy, when you see this picture. So the question is, uh, I could see the world and see this, and what do you think I'm going to be in growth or protection? Growth. growth. So the bottom line is, how I see it is adjusting who I am. Well, the interesting part about that is as follows. The perception interfaces between the environment and your biology. But your perception is belief. And therefore, Beliefs act as a filter between the real environment and your biology. So your belief filters interfere if they're not accurate. If your beliefs are off, you're going to select genes that are inappropriate for the environment. So again, what keeps you in balance? Keeping your perception clear. So the bottom line is this. We actually end up with a filter between the environment and the camera, which is learned. We learn these filters. Before we were born, we were already learning. On the weekend course, I talk about conscious parenting. Many of your beliefs were already installed in you before you were born through the interaction of your mother and her perception of the environment because she was helping. Mothers and fathers are actually per, are genetic engineers. They are selecting genes in their offspring as they develop so the offspring fits the environment that the parents live in. Interesting point. Well, the question is this. We have filters. So, now, you've got envelopes in your, in, that you came with. There's a red and green filter. Let's call these belief filters. And what I would like you to do is put one or the other filters in front of your eyes. Pick a red one or a green one, whatever one they got, and hold it up in front of your eyes and look at the screen. I'm going to ask you a question. and the que no, keep, Don't open them up. If they're gr double, keep them, keep them folded, okay? Here's, here you go. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. When you look at the picture, tell me if this is a picture of love or fear. When you see it, does it look like love or fear with your glasses on? Put the glasses on. Fear. Are you living in love or are you living in fear? Okay, now take the glasses off and find the other glasses. Okay, you got a different set of glasses now? Okay, put those up. You ready? Are you living in love or are you living in fear? Okay, are you living in love or are you living in fear? Love. Well, here's the simple point. This is the beautiful point. Life has everything in it. Life has everything, but you will only see what you have perception filters to see. And you were taught perception filters. You were taught by your parents. You were taught in school. You were taught how to see life. And here's the beautiful part. We can remove these filters that have interfered with our lives. Of course, as a cell biologist, Dr. Lipton focuses on the body, and in particular, the genes. We adjust our genes to adjust to the environment we think we live in. And I say we think we live in 
because perception may be right and perception may be wrong. I might say, I live in a toxic, hostile environment, but that may be my belief. I may actually be in a very supportive environment. My perception may differ from the reality of the environment. Your own beliefs are selecting your genes. He says it again and again. It's belief that changes your genes. It's perception that changes your genes. Not only does perception activate behavior, not only does perception activate the genes, but when necessary, perception rewrites genes. Since Dr. Lipton equates perception and belief, that sentence could read, not only do your beliefs activate behavior, not only do your beliefs activate the genes, but when necessary, your beliefs rewrite your genes. Our beliefs are altering our body at every moment, at every time. Your belief filters interfere if they're not accurate. But we can remove these belief filters that have interfered with our lives. This is such an extremely important point. Dr. Lipton did not say we can change these belief filters that interfere with our lives. This is not about changing belief systems. This is not about trading one belief system for another one. This is not about replacing negative beliefs with positive beliefs or about the power of positive thinking, which is a belief in itself. This is about removing, letting go of our beliefs altogether. What was not very clear because of the poor quality video and the way the experiment was run this time was the picture at the end and the different colored glasses the audience was supposed to put on. I've seen Dr. Lipton do this a couple times, and here's how it actually goes. Dr. Lipton puts a picture on the screen. If the entire audience puts on the glasses with the red lenses, or the fear filter, they would filter out everything in the picture that was red, leaving the picture full of fearful things. If the audience puts on the glasses with the green lenses, or the love filter, they would filter out everything in the picture that was green, leaving the picture full of loving things. Then Dr. Lipton said, Life has everything in it, but you will only see what you have belief filters to see. That's how belief filters work. They determine what we see how we perceive things in our holographic 3D total immersion movie. So, are you ready for the heresy? Unless you can love war and violence for the perfection they are, as much as you love a beautiful sunset, or inspiring music, or the touch of a woman's skin, that love becomes conditional, not unconditional, and acts just like another belief filter, as it was in Dr. Lipton's experiment. And if you try to see the world only through a love filter, you will miss everything else your infinite eye has created for you there. For the secret to true joy and lasting peace of mind is being able to see the complete picture and everything that's in it, and embrace and enjoy it all equally, without judgment or resistance. And there's no reason you can't do that when you understand that your own infinite eye is creating it all for you, as a gift to you, down to the smallest detail. So what I want to do now is take a very specific example we all encounter every day of our lives and see how these belief filters apply. And that example is money. In the U.S., if I go around and ask people what they believe about money, I get a lot of different answers. See if any of them might be something you believe as well. I have to earn money. I have to work for money. I can't afford even my basic needs. There's a limited supply of money available to me. 
Every time 